Hi guys, this is Primoz from HighStakesMindset.com and today I have another interview for you guys. Now here with me is Kirsten who is really really good at getting big wins. So Kirsten, can you tell us a little bit about what do you do? Absolutely, I am a PhD candidate at Georgia Tech and I study how high-tech labor markets work. Okay, what does that mean? That means Every mayor, every governor wants to say, hey, how can I replicate Silicon Valley in my district? I tell them what they can do, what they can't do, and where the biggest win is. Mm, awesome. So you are really, really good at getting the big wins, really focusing on the important things and getting all the unimportant, you know, unimportant crap out. Yep. Were you always like that? Yes, as okay. far as I can remember. Okay. So what is it that you do specifically to, um, like, what is the process that you go through to identify if something is a big win or not? So it's generally more of a recognition of when I'm going off the wrong path than a specific decision to go on the right path. Mm -hmm. I will find that I'm worrying about what color should this be or which software am I going to use to do X. And that doesn't matter. What matters is that X gets done. So as soon as I start into a train of thought where I'm asking all of these low-level tactical questions, I realize, stop, put everything down, close your computer, get up and physically walk away from your chair and say, wait a minute, what am I trying to do here? Write it down, say it aloud. If you think verbally, then call a friend. And they don't have to say anything. Just say, hey, I want to talk at you for five minutes. Shut up and listen, please. And then you do that, and by the end of it, you know exactly what you should be focusing on. Mm, awesome. So can you give us a couple of more specific examples of, like, let's say, um, mm, let's say that you want to get a project done. Like, how would you start a project? How would you go for the project? How would you finish a project? And how would you use this focus for the project? So let's talk about the process of getting into graduate school as a project. Okay, sure. This is a pretty easy one. So you will see gobs and gobs of students posting on forums or talking to their friends, their professors, saying, here is my GPA, here is my GRE score, will I be able to get into Stanford or MIT or Harvard or whatever? That's the wrong question. The right question is to say, hey, how can I build a relationship with this faculty member who might advise me in graduate school? Hmm. The big win is figuring out exactly what you want to do in graduate school, finding the top people who do that, and building relationships with them so that they're recruiting you instead of you saying, hey, I'm so good, I swear I'm really good, like, look, I'm smart, here's my GPA, here's what I did in undergrad, I wrote this awesome personal statement, like, please take me, please. Yeah. No, that's, that's what people do. That's what they actually do. And it's complete crap. Yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's sort of like we know from Dream Job that your resume is the last step in the process. Mm. Raj and I have both gotten hired for several jobs without ever showing anyone a resume. It's the same thing with graduate school. Um, I actually failed the analytical writing section of graduate school, which is pretty laughable given that writing is what I do. But nobody cared. I got in everywhere I applied because it didn't matter. What I had done was build relationships with several faculty members in each place because I knew that was the big win and they weren't gonna care about my GRE. Mm. Okay, so when we talk about big wins, you can maybe relate it even to a concept of like 20% of the things that you're doing right now are getting you like 80% of the results that you're exactly. getting. Right? So those 20% of the things that you're doing right now are probably the big wins that you should be focusing on yeah. and doing just more of that and cutting all of the other 80% out of your life. Right. How do you actually do that? You say no. Mmm, interesting. Even when it's awkward, even when you feel socially uncomfortable, even when it's someone you love, you say no. So can you go out to dinner with me tonight? I'd love to, but I'm focused on X. Will you teach this class? I'd love to, but I'm focused on X. Will you do blah, blah, blah? You always say no. If it does not directly relate to your number one goal at this moment, then you say no. 
Mm. But that we're talking just about the work time, right? I mean, like we don't want to actually work every single day for 24 right, hours right. and like say no to everything, right? That said though, I want to talk about personally draining relationships for a moment. Mm. Okay. So sometimes you'll have friends who you've known for a long time, maybe you went to school with them, maybe you shared a job with them, or they were college roommates or something, but you notice that every time you hang out with them, you feel worse afterwards mm. than before. Yeah. That, totally. even though it happens in your personal life, that's interfering with how well you can do at work. So what you have to do is say, actually, no, I'd love to go to dinner with you, but I'm busy. I have other plans. Mm. You stop those relationships. It doesn't mean that you don't do fun things in your personal time, but it means that you avoid things that drain you. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. I mean, there's a lot of these people who are like toxic friends. Every time we come next to them, they're just whining, they're not taking action, they're talking about poli politics or things that you just don't care about, and you just spend so much energy just like talking to them, trying to talk to them, and they're like, oh my god, he's talking about this again, and you're, then you're wasting energy on that. Right. Like, instead, I mean, here we are in San Francisco, here are a lot of awesome people, like Kirsten's here, Raji is here, other guys that I've interviewed, a lot of them are here as well, and it's not draining to be around them. It's exciting, right? Right. So I'm curious, how do you find more of those people? Like, because if for many people who are going to be like, um, okay, so I should cut these people from my life, but then I don't have anyone else. So how do you find other people who are where you want to be and that will help you get excited and succeed in your career? Usually you have at least one to start with. Mm -hmm. So a really good way is to find who they read, what they do in their free time, what groups they hang out with, and who their friends are. Mm, interesting. So if it's a friend, then meet their mutual friends. If it's a professor or a boss or someone much senior to you, well, what groups are they involved in? And can you go be involved in those groups? Mm. You essentially seek out what the kinds of people who you want to meet do in their spare time and go there. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great insight and it's really important that you mentioned that we all have at least one person because yeah, usually we do and we right. always usually have this huge network that we have no idea about like friends of this friend like it's something that you as a poker player are just not thinking about every day it's not in your mind, you mm -hmm. don't realize it but when you take leverage of it, you can get yourself to the new level and you have to really realize that when you get rid of, rid of top six friends, you will have more time for these new friends. Because right now I'm like, oh, but I don't have time to meet new people. Yeah. Yes, you do. Well, yeah, I mean, probably, first of all, yes, yeah, you yes, do. you do. But if you get rid of those, you'll have more time right. as well, right? Right. But I think the excuse, I don't have time, is really bullshit for yeah. most people. If, I, I heard Tim Ferriss say this once. I think it was Tim Ferriss. If you don't have time, you don't have priorities. It's complete crap. So here's a good story about this one. Um, from as long as I can remember, as an adult, I have been going to bed at 10 p.m. and waking up at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. I get nine hours of sleep every night. And that was true even in college at a very selective school. It's true during my PhD program. It's true even though I am currently consulting for the Federal Reserve Bank. It's still true. I do a lot and I sleep. The excuse I don't have time to sleep means I don't take care of myself. Yeah. I don't have priorities and I don't know how to create priorities. It's a very negative message actually. I don't have time means I can't manage my shit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I totally agree and like yeah. everybody uses this excuse. I don't have time for X, Y, Z. I don't have time for sleep, to meditate. Like seriously, people are coming to me nowadays. They're like, oh yeah, I would love to do meditation, but I don't have 10 minutes a day. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and then exactly. you're spending like five hours a day on Facebook and emails. Dude, yeah. you're or just I don't bullshitting. have time to exercise. Right? Yeah, like, of course, no, you're so busy, like um, watching video series because yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you have low-value crap that you can take away in order to make time for the things that really matter. Yeah. It's like, it's not about having time, it's about making time. Exactly. Yeah. You make time for the things you care about. Hmm. Totally. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up now. It was a great interview. So like a lot of people are going to be listening to this and they're like, okay, that's great. That works for her. But how can I make this work for me? So is there something actionable that people can do today to actually identify those big wins that they have in their lives and start working towards one of them? That's a great question. I would say 
turn off everything electronic that you have around you. As soon as this video ends, mm -hmm. shut it all down. Turn off your cell phone, turn off your computer, turn off any other gadget that you have anywhere around you. Stop for a second and say, what is the biggest thing that I want to accomplish right now? That's the first step. Mm -hmm. And then the second step is, what is the fastest, most efficient, most effective way to get there? Mm. It's probably not all the shit you were doing the last three hours, I promise. <laughs> Unless you're uh, really practiced at this and have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. It's probably not that. And if you don't know what it is, some people don't know, that's fine. Usually you'll intuitively know. Usually it's something that you've been re resisting doing because you're scared. Everybody gets scared. That's fine. That's human. But say, thanks, I'm scared. Fuck you. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. So if you know that, that's great. If, on the other hand, you genuinely don't know what that best way to get there is, find someone who's really fucking good at what you want to do and call them up. Say, hey, what's the number one thing I should be doing in order to get here? For finding a job, it's taking people out to coffee. Yeah. And everyone gets stuck there. They're like, what if they hate me? Uh, what if I don't know what to say? What if um, they like don't recommend me or I mess up and I like ruin that relationship for life? Doesn't matter. Go do it. Get your ass off the couch and go do it. Yeah. So that's it to recap. Shut down everything electronic, write down the number one thing you're trying to do, and the fastest way to get there. And if you don't know the fastest way to get there, ask somebody who's already been there. Wow, that is awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen, for taking your time today and um, doing this intro. I think it was really valuable to a lot of listeners. I hope to talk to you in the future because I think you know a lot more awesome stuff. But that's it for today. Now, usually I would tell you to go and sign up for the email list, but seriously, you gotta turn off your computer right now, so yep. just do that. Turn it off, and your cell phone too. Yeah. No okay. Facebook, no email. Nothing. Gone. Bye. Bye.